It's the Rink Live podcast. I'm Jess Myers. That's McHatton. It's uh, almost September. Well, hockey season, what? Like It's coming up. Although, let's be honest, hockey season never ends, right, Mick? <laughs> it never really does. I, I can honestly say that. Yeah, all the, you know, uh, here in St. Cloud, anyway, the, the college players are all back at school. So that, you know, some of the captain's practices and actually the, the uh, college coaches can be on the well, they can have like eight hours of instruction, I think, a week and for about a month here. So it's ramping up here. I talked to a uh, assistant coach yesterday for a high school program. It hadn't dawned on me. I always wondered why anybody would want to coach high school hockey in Minnesota. Honest to goodness, because of how little it pays and all the stuff you have to deal with, you know, and and, uh, and I'm thinking of the parents. I was one. I can, I can say it. Um, this guy reminded me. In the modern era of high school coaching, they make a lot of money in the summer off camps and, and those kinds of things. So there is a, a little bit of an income boost. It's still probably not worth your, your hourly rate, but uh, there's a little bit of relief for, for high school coaches now that get that can make a little more income, which is a good thing, I think. Yes, well, I'm I'm helping coach a, a AAA team, as you know, and there's there's no pay involved there. So. <laughs> you, get a, you get a shirt, you get a pullover, anything like that? Yeah, I, I, I got a sweatshirt. See? <laughs> See the benefits, man. Well, okay, so it's finally happened. The Rink Live podcast. We're going Hollywood, right? We're 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 going to talk movies today. Happy to be joined by Tommy Haynes, who is a documentary director with some Minnesota roots, and he's got a what looks like just a fantastic documentary coming out. Uh, Mick, I know you've seen the screener. I've been crazy with State Fair stuff, so I haven't watched it yet. But trust me, I will. Hockey Land. Uh, it, it, it's a documentary about high school hockey in Minnesota. It's something that we're all very close to. And, uh, you know, this is a subject that's been been ripe for exploring it more in depth for a long time. Tommy, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Tell me, uh, well, first of all, you know, tell us about your roots a little bit. I know you, you, you're you from Minnesota originally. Um, what, your hockey background and, and kind of, you know, I would assume you grew up around the sport a little bit, but tell us about you. Well, I'm going to age myself here, but I, yeah, I, I grew up in a little town called Mountain Iron in the 80s. And um, I started skating when I was five and it was right after the, uh, uh, the miracle on ice had happened. And so, you know, in the iron range, you got uh, Harrington and Pavlich and all these guys that are just that live down the street from you. They're coming back with their gold medals. And so every every five and six year old was playing hockey at that point in time. Um, and so I got my got my start then and played in all the outdoor rinks there. South Grove, same rink that Matt Niskanen played on. Um, and, and just like most most cities in, in, in Minnesota, they have some like big name like that that played at the local rink right so ours was Matt Niskin and actually Matt Cullen also played for Virginia for a little bit before moving to Moorhead um but so that was kind of my start and uh played you know through Pee Wee's up there and then moved down to the Twin Cities and, and kind of stopped playing once I got to the Twin Cities but um had had been uh I had been curious about you know kind of what it would have been like to play uh high school hockey up in the Iron Range in northern Minnesota and so this this for me was kind of uh, a little nostalgic trip, uh, you know, to, and somewhat of a selfish one to just go check what, what what that experience would be like. And and like you said, there hadn't really been an in-depth story done on this. I mean, we were raised with, you know, films like Hoop Dreams and, you know, these Friday Night Lights films and Hoosiers and, and like why, you know, Minnesota high school hockey is such a big deal and people are so passionate about it. Why hasn't there really been an exploration into that? So that, that was something we were looking forward to doing. Yeah, what, uh, you know, how, how did you end up picking, you know, Eveleth Gilbert in, in Hermantown? How did, what was the process like, I guess, for determining, okay, here are the schools that we're going to, you know, try to, you know, focus on? Well, first, first and foremost, we wanted something up north. We want to kind of have that, those the schools that are a little smaller, that they, the kids still play multiple sports, baseball, football, you know, whatever. <laughs> Um, they're still sh shoveling rooftops and they're still doing all these things that kind of did when I, when I, when I was younger. And so, um, we wanted to make sure there was a Northern film in, in that way, but yeah, I mean, it could have been anyone from, uh, Rosa war road, uh, rivalry, of course, too. There's so many great rivalries in the state. So people have asked like, why, why these two cities, why these two communities? And one of it was, I wanted to make something about the iron range. Cause that's where I, that's where I was grew up and that's what I know. Um, but also we had been searching for about six, seven years, um, you know, what would be the most captivating story? We kind of just missed the Greenway one it was 2019 when they had that miracle run. They beat Hermantown, made it to the state finals. Um, so we missed that year. 
Um, but we saw that, you know, Blake Biondi was coming back for his senior year at Hermantown. So that was going to be a big deal. We heard that Eveleth was that this story program with, from John Mayasic and Mariucci all, all the way through these, what, seven, nine championships. I forget even how many, but uh, that program is going to go away and consolidate with Virginia. So there was an urgency also to tell the story uh, because that program was, was leaving. So that's kind of how we, we picked those two. And then we thought they're both in section seven there's a good chance that one of those two teams is going to make the state tourney. And so that was part of it as well. We are in an interesting time, I would have to say, as far as privacy and about, you know, respect for kids and all of that. You know, I, I don't think we've ever been more aware of the need for privacy, the need to respect, you know, staying off of, uh, you know, staying out of people's lives. At the same token, show me a high school kid who has, doesn't put their entire life out there on TikTok, on Instagram, on social media, all of that. How did you strike a balance, I, I want to know, with, with getting access? Because, you know, in this film, not, you know, spoiler alert, but you're in the locker room. You, you, have, you have some real behind-the-scenes access that not everybody gets. How, how did that part come about, and was it, it a challenge at all that way? That, that was the biggest challenge because, you know, I make these kind of observational films where I sit within a, a community for, you know, two, three years at times. And so there's there's just a trust built up over time. But in this case, we had to meet these parents, uh, the Beyondies, the Van Orsdells, the Trout ones. Like we had to meet them, um, you know, very quickly, just in a matter of weeks and basically say, hey, we're going to be hanging out with your teenage son. Um, you know, from, you know, odd end hours of the day. And so that it was, we had to have dinners with the parents and kind of work that out and kind of figure out what that would look like for them. And we started out slow. We weren't like pushing ourselves onto these kids too much, but by the end of the movie, yeah, we're going on dates with these kids, going to school dances and really seeing what that life was like, not just the hockey life, but just that the life in the community that they were leading. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of, one of the funny things uh, in you, you're, you're mentioning, uh, you know, the shoveling snow off the roof, you, you, you capture a lot of that, you know, th those moments, because there's, there's actually a moment where you can see guys <laughs> shoveling snow off the roof. Yeah. And they're talking about an ice dam on the, on, on the house and, uh, yeah. you know, and somebody gets their, their truck stuck in, in, <laughs> in, in, yeah. in a ditch or whatever. And one of his teammates comes over and pulls them out. I mean, there, there's a lot of, I mean, I mean, it's it's about hockey, but I mean, but it's it's got a real good vibe for okay, well, what's it like growing up in, in northern Minnesota? Yeah, that was a goal for us, right? To have that, you know, uh, just the culture of what's going on. So, you know, obviously you have the hockey stuff where parents are flooding rinks and you know helping out the concession stands and things, but you also have like, yeah, you don't you don't call the tow truck guy when you're when you get stuck in the ditch. You just call your buddy and they come over and, and tow it out for you. So there's a lot of self reliance. Up in northern Minnesota too, that I, I kind of want to show a little of that. These are tough kids, um, but yeah, that, I think the scenery too of that area, the pine trees and the wolves and everything like that was an important thing for us to show uh, the beauty of the, kind of that space. Tommy, looking up, uh, you know, I, I, I'm one of those IMDb junkies where you know I'll, <laughs> I'll I'll go back and find everybody's history, and I I have a friend for, that I went to college with who's actually a stuntman in Hollywood. It's kind of fun looking at the project is that he works on, but. Uh, you know, looking at your background, you've done some pretty diverse stuff. I mean, some stuff about gold mining. You've this is not your first foray into hockey. Let's talk about pond hockey. That was kind of yeah. your, uh, you know, as far as I can tell, your your first kind of in depth look at kind of the hockey culture in 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 Minnesota and elsewhere. You know, where did you get that idea? And tell us about that project. That was uh, I was in Sundance. I was at the Sundance Film Festival in two thousand four, and I met uh, the Napoleon Dynamite director Jared Hess, and he was saying. He's like, if I can give you some advice, uh, do what you know. And so I was like, oh, yeah, I know, I know hockey in Minnesota pretty well. And that was the same year that uh, Fred Haberman had kind of started the U.S. Pond Hockey Championship. So I met with Fred and just uh, said, hey, can we film, film this event? I just saw the film Murder Ball, too. That was, you know, about this kind of same, same idea of like a sports doc film that I was like, oh, this would be a cool idea to do the U.S. Pond Hockey Championship. But the film beyond the tournament became so much bigger. I started meeting, you know, Willard Eichela and uh, Wendy Anderson, all these old Minnesota legends. And then that kind of snowballed. And all of a sudden we're, we're meeting, uh, you know, Wayne Gretzky, Sidney Crosby, Patrick Kane, because um, everyone wanted to talk about growing up playing outdoor hockey. Um, so we really touched on a nerve there, I think. Uh, and so yeah, that, 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 that kicked off my documentary career, pretty amazing experience. Um, but also, you know, during that process, I met Neil Broughton and, and he's a guy that I grew up watching. He's one of my favorite players growing up. Um, 
I know, I know it's a rival of yours, uh, you know, at the, over, across the street in, in Roseau, but, um, <laughs> you know, this is a guy that won Mir Miracle on Ice gold medal, won a Hobie Baker, won a Natty title with the Gophers that won a Stanley Cup with uh, the, the uh, New Jersey Devils. And so, but he, during our interview, he kept like hearkening back to his days with Roseau and like losing in the state tournament to Edina and, and like that, that trip back with all of his guys on the long bus ride home. And this is the 70s. So the bus ride is probably really long. Um, and just, uh, you know, all these guys, he'd been growing up playing hockey with since he's four and five years old. And he said, everyone's just like tears are going down their eyes. And, and that, that moment, I was 2007. So this has been 15 years later. It was like, I, I was like, how do we capture that? Like that emotion and that kind of, uh, of these senior guys that have been playing together for so long, let's capture that high school experience and kind of all that goes into that. So in a lot of ways, yeah, it's, I'm glad you mentioned pond hockey because it was really the, the impetus to this project. You know, and in, 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 you mentioned hoop dreams earlier, and and I, you know, that there is uh, a little bit of a vibe of of, of that, right? Uh, you know, w w with this, you know, in that you're kind of following the the story of uh, now in hoop dreams, it's over several years, and 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 they're following a family around, which was. I don't know how they got access for all that for that yeah. long, but, uh, but, but for, for you, uh, you know, did, did you decide that, okay, we're going to have to focus on, you know, a, a couple players here. I mean, all the, all the, all the players kind of seem to have like a little bit of a moment, uh, uh, you know, uh, in the, in the film, but, but there are a couple of focal points, you know, I mean, was that, a, you know, a conscious decision? Well, we got to tell the story a little bit through a couple of, a couple of eyes here. Yep, I think the film was originally structured, you're exactly right, it was about, you know, kind of the, what the boys experiences would be, so that, that's kind of like the Hoop Dreams idea, but we want to make it a little more stylistically like the Friday Night Lights television series, so it's mm -hmm. kind of a, a merging of those two ideas, um, so we knew it had to be a story about these boys, uh, we started with about 10 we filmed 10 of them early on and kind of were seeing who had interesting stories. Obviously, Biondi was an uh, intrigue for us from the start just because we knew he was going to be a, you know, Mr. Hockey finalist that year, uh, an elite player, a guy that had been turning down the national development team two years in a row. Um, so, and, th and this is a guy that has a legit chance to play in the NHL someday. So that, that was someone we always wanted to make sure we, we filmed that and see like, what's that experience like? The kind of weight that's on his shoulders, mm -hmm. you know, as a 16, 17 year old um having nhl scouts at the game like what what's that even like to live in live in the, live in his shoes for a day mm -hmm. um so he was important to us but then also yeah just kind of getting the everyday experience of of guys playing an evil that you know maybe they go play juniors for a year or two maybe they go play d3 hockey at some point but more so they just have a passion for the game and uh we want to capture that experience as well logistically i've got to ask you know did, did you you know find a place to live in in hermantown epaulet that area for the winter i mean how, how how do you set up and and uh you know kind of settle in for embedding yourself with, with a couple of teams for that long yeah well my brother lives in duluth so the hermantown stuff we just stayed with him um up in the iron range there's a it's i forget the name it's someplace uh, by giants ridge but, but they're beautifully like renovated old wooden cabins that are amazing Nice. And so we're, we're a little, a little bit of a hike from, from Eveleth, but we all, I mean, Eveleth, I don't know if you know, but it's, it's strung together now with Gilbert and Wasabi East, which is Aurora Hoyt Lakes. So it's like a whole string of the iron range. And so we were pretty close to Aurora Hoyt Lakes and that's where the roof shoveling scenes happened. Um, so we were, we were right there and it was 20, even, even that it was 20 minutes to Eveleth since we kind of hopped back and forth uh, from there. So we're, we were, you know, now I'm in my 40s, so we're living a little nicer. I think if I was at pond hockey, you'd probably be staying at the whatever the Super Eight or something down the street. But yeah, we're we were trying to do a little nicer this time. Were were, were the coaches, uh, you know, were, were they tough to convince to, to do this? Were they apprehensive? Were were they okay with it? Uh, you know that that you know as, as you're mentioning, I mean that that's a. Uh, you know, a big thing, you know, getting into a locker room and stuff and coaches get edgy about that. <laughs> you know, was, was that a tough sell with those guys or not? I think both coaches from the start were concerned clearly about, yeah, the boys, the exploitation of the boys and, you know, just being sensitive to that. Um, but, you know, again, those are long conversations over the summertime I had with Pat and Jeff, uh, both coaches, just saying, you know, trying to just explain kind of our idea with it and where we're going to be with the kids and kind of what that idea, we're not going to try to exploit these kids at parties and doing that and making mistakes that all 16, 17 year olds do. Mm -hmm. but that wasn't our idea. The idea was like th this hockey experience, what that would be like. And so, but yeah, you're right. That was, that was tricky, really tricky. And, um, 
And I think even more for Pat Andrews, who's the Hermantown guy, like uh, that program is an elite program. And so you got to be very, very careful about, you know, what you're going to show there. And, and, you know, a lot of people kind of hate Hermantown. They want them to go double A, right? And all this, all this rhetoric you hear. Um, and so, yeah, it was something that Pat really thought about long and hard. And I think if you talk to him, he'd, he'd say the same thing. It was a tough decision, but the long and in, in, in the end of it, he also thought it'd be a, a good decision for the program. And so obviously if the film's going to go nationally right now, so that program is going to be looked at, you know, from, from across, across the country. So, yeah, but yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because it was a, it was a tough choice, I think for both guys. In the, uh, in the social media world, everybody wants to go viral. You know, they always say you, you, you want, you want stuff to blow up on you. I, uh, I kind of accidentally had that happen during the state tournament going back 10 years or so when St. Thomas Academy and Hermantown were the big rivals on the class A level, Bruce yeah. Plant as the Hermantown coach would always rail about, you know, St. Thomas doesn't belong in class A, they should move up. They eventually did move up. And, yeah. you know, now that debate has turned around. And as you yeah. acknowledged, you know, it's all, why doesn't Hermantown moved up? So, you know, I threw out on Twitter, uh, you know, one of my favorite lines from the Batman movies, you know, you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. That I, I think is what happened to, to Hermantown now, you know, it, sure. God bless them. They're a great program, but that that's a ongoing debate. And, I got some spirited reactions to that. I mean, I, I, I really like that. I, it, you seem to kind of capture the passion that, you know, yeah, these are just, you know, 16, 17 year old kids playing a game, but this is uh this is some pretty heavy stuff in, in, in small communities. And, and for these kids, this is a, a vital point in their lives. I mean, I, I, I played tennis in high school, right. It's, we did not have uh, scouts there and, you know, the, the level of, uh, I mean, that, this is why you have all this, you know, hatred and rivalries and everything in Minnesota, because these, yeah, they're, these games are serious. Um, and if kids open and roll and switch schools and go from here to there, if they have to war road or if they go to Hermantown, instead of like being at a smaller school around that area, um, those schools get upset. And then, you know, it, it's, it's real tricky. And a lot of these kids are doing this now because they do see a path for their kid to maybe play in college or play in the pros. Um, whereas most sports in Minnesota, that's not really an option for them. They're just playing the sport, whether it's soccer to tennis, so they're just playing because they love it and, and that's it. Whereas Minnesota, you do have the weight of, uh, this could actually be a career for me. And so, yeah, it, it, it becomes tricky. Uh, I, I, my comment on the double A stuff in single A is, um, you know, I actually like the experience I had there, you know, filming like St. Cloud, St. Cloud Cathedral play Hermantown in the semifinals in 2020, it was packed it was packed. And my worry is if you keep taking the, uh, these top programs in, in single A and push them into double A, you're, you're just going to like, you don't quite have the same experience for single A. I, I like that these smaller schools have this chance to have this big stage. And so I, I would say that, I mean, now, now whether I, I'm more of an issue of the open enrollment, I think that becomes an issue. Like cause kids just hop in schools. I'd prefer there be some kind of, I don't know how you restrict it. It's so tough, but uh, that that'd be more of my issue but you know herman town's got 700 students the, the limit for double a i think is 1300 so they're not even close to the size for that right that's not that's not the issue but um yeah i i, I like i like that double a double a and single a both exist and that they can thrive and 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 for the for also some haters out there it wasn't that long ago and there's just one one class and warroad knows this you know warroad wants yep, to stay yep. titles by themselves when it was just one class so instead of maybe complaining about that like hey just do your best like there's at least two classes now, at least you got that going for you. So anyway, that does, that's just my, and, and this is something, you know, I, I obviously look, got to know Pat and Jeff and Jeff, Jeff from the Evelyn side was pretty upset about all these guys. Uh, you know, if uh, Joey Pierce coming from Ely and things like that, like I'm sure Jeff would have loved if you to hopped onto the Evelyn team too. So yeah, I, I definitely see it from both perspectives, but you know, my general thoughts is that I, I just want there to be a strong class A as well as a strong double A. The, the, there's a lot of uh, I'll say this the, there there are some really tough life moments in 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 the in this film right that I I, I wasn't necessarily in, anticipating but of course you know you you don't know as, as documentary film you know you don't know uh, what where you're going to run into I'm sure as as it's going on uh, you know the the Dowd family's uh, uh, mother uh, has cancer and the, and you see a lot of what they were kind of going through as they're trying to get through their their, their season uh, uh you know pat andrews uh you know talks about his his dad you know dying of cancer at a, at a young age when when he was a, a young age and um you know that that part of it i, I 
I, I would imagine that as documentary film, you know, you 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 want to you want to capture you know what, what's what's going on in people's lives, but there's there's some really life, literally, I mean, some life and death stuff in this film. Yeah, and and those are tricky scenes to shoot, obviously, with the you know like the mom with cancer and and Indio has to deal with back problems throughout the film, and so there's a a lot going on with that family. And so we had to be pretty sensitive as filmmakers to make sure we're not just barging in and, 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 you know, checking in on all that. So it was, it was, it was, it was tough, but I think it was, it's important because it was important for Pat's story. And I think it's important to show also like the, the role that these coaches can play in these boys lives when some of, some of their, their family stuff is kind of uh, breaking down or is, is going through all these changes where the, the hockey is kind of this um, place for them to, you know, learn how to become a guy beyond your, your family structure. And so that's what Pat went through. That's why he became a coach um, because of what the role that Bruce Plant played on in his life. And then I think Pat's doing that now for Indio and Blake and these other guys. And so we want to kind of show that cycle, but then also show the, you know, the parents perspective, you know, parents are key. They're key in this cog of, of Minnesota high school hockey. So we didn't want to just like not ignore that. So we want to make sure we had some moms in there as well, uh, as well as the coaches. Well, and Ellie, you know, the other part was, you know, you, you guys didn't shy away from this. I mean, uh, and you didn't go in depth with it, but I mean, Elliot had had some challenges uh, during the course of his high school career. And, you know, his parents talked about it, his, his, the coaches talk about it, he talks about it. Um, you know, it, it, it was interesting to kind of, you know, see that perspective as, as well that you, I, I would imagine when you, you approached him, it was like, okay, well, we got to be honest about what, what all is kind of going on here. Yep, we had to have, we had to talk about that. But I mean, I think the I think the explanation that I gave him was, look, you this this happens at every school in the state almost, where there's just a there's a prolific player on the team that gets that gets in trouble, and the coach has to deal with that, you know, like try to foster that that talent some somehow, and so you know he really represents that, and and I've had since we've shown the film a few times, I've had a lot of coaches come up to me and say, I got a guy just like Elliot, just like mm -hmm. that. And, and I think he really comes around. He really grows throughout the mm -hmm. film. Like, you know, he came from like a, a, a troubled partying kid. And now he's just like, he's a great leader. Ended up being the captain for the mullets uh, last couple of years, right there in Minneapolis, St. Paul. And now he's going to play D3 hockey out in Southern Maine. So quite the growth for him. But I think he, yeah, he was an important part of the movie. We, uh, you know, this chronicles the 2020 season for, for Hermantown after, and, and, and uh, you know, I, I don't think I'm, I'm spoiling a lot, but, you know, I think people can look up pretty easily how that season yeah. ended for both teams. Um, the thing I always think about is we were right on the edge of the, the pandemic hitting then and, and, you know, kind of the, the major shutdown that we had in the country. It literally came like a week after the state hockey tournament. Did that kind of, uh, was that a cloud over what you were doing? And did that make it a challenge to, to, to do what you did with this film? uh i don't know about a cloud but it was definitely uh it was definitely present for us while we're while we're editing I and mean, we filmed the mr hockey ceremony on march 8th i think the state shut down on march 11th yeah um and so all those tournaments that next weekend i think it was girls basketball maybe wrestling none of those happened um so we just felt fortunate right away we're like wow i can't believe we actually finished our principal photography like just within days um, I mean, I can't imagine what this movie would be like if the tournament got shut down. It'd be almost like a COVID film. It'd be hockey, then the, the COVID ending. So I'm so glad and fortunate that we did get to get that in. But then also, yeah, it, it made me thinking about these families isolated and kind of hockey on pause that next year um, for what they're going through. So that kind of affected me as, you know, as we're editing the film that next year for sure. Yeah. You want to, one of the more kind of gut wrenching things I, I read about in the wake of the pandemic is yeah you're right the state girls basketball tournament had started and they actually called it off on like Friday so they didn't even get to play the state championship games and then of course boys basketball which would have been the following week got canceled and 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 this always just strikes me I think it was Eden Prairie that had an undefeated team that year and and was literally ranked you know among the top teams in the country not just in Minnesota and the state tournament was kind of going to be a coronation for them as state champions. And at one point they all got together and went to their gym and they cut the nets down just as if to say, you know, we're, we're yeah. going to declare ourselves state champions, but God, you think of what, you, you know, just a gut wrenching thing for those kids to work so hard all their life and right on the brink of, of what they think is going to be a state championship. It all gets, it's yanked away. So hockey was very fortunate that year, I think. Very fortunate. Although I don't know if you know what happened to Hermantown the next year, but they, uh, 
they were in the section final game and I forget if it was, I don't know if it was against Stenfeld or what, but uh, there's a supposed COVID case and then everyone that was in the close counter. So they, they had to send their whole JV team with, with a uh, Zam plant. Cause I think Zam was still injured. So he just came back. And so that, that was insane. So, yeah, I mean, it really, it just the, all these kids have been dealing with this for a couple of years. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's gotta be tough. It's, it's, it's really shortened. Uh, they had the, what the extra year of eligibility for college guys. And so they could play a fifth year. So that really uh, tightened all that stuff up from juniors to high school where there just isn't that much room to make the college level um, or make the junior level. If you're trying to do that, because everything got kind of pushed together. Sure. Um, so I, I just feel bad for the athletes in, the, in this case. Yeah, it's, it's rough. Now, did you have a Gilbert really open the season with Hermantown? Was that really the first game of the season? It, it was for Hermantown. Okay. It was, it was for Hermantown. Evelyn played at uh, Red Wing and, and maybe one other school before that, uh, okay. but, but lopsided wins and not that interesting. So yeah, I mean, it's just, as it, it's, it's, we have to construct a story, right? And so, well, yeah. Yeah. No, no, I... yeah. And also that I, well, that, that it's a good, it's a good comment though, because you know, they both play so many games. We had uh, Eden Prairie playing Hermantown and Benilde and, all these games, we had to kind of choose what games are the most pointing games, which ones to show, and so that that was tricky. And even like we we know we have about an hour and a half, hour and forty minutes to make this film, and how much footage do you show from each game? Um, so that was a huge challenge for us to to figure out, you know, which games to show and how much game, how much footage to show from each game. It's tricky. Yeah, it was it was interesting in the, with, with that first game because it really kind of sets up though a, a lot of the dynamics, right? I mean, you get you get a real vibe for okay, here's where Herman Tomlin's coming from, here's where Evelith Gilbert is coming from in terms of what the coach's messages are, you know, yeah. and and um, you know how they're kind of viewed by one. Uh, there's well, I'll, I'll I'll just there there's a great moment where they're talking to the you're talking to the Dowd boys or whatever, and and they were you're asking them about there the the season oh, yeah. opener and they're like oh it's just Eveleth I mean yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. and then wow. it's tie, and then it's a tie game at one point that when they're playing and Pat Andrews comes in and he's kicking a yeah. garbage can basically so it, it, that was a fun fun element well they're they're just kids right and that's Aiden Aiden Dowd and yeah you just uh he wasn't wasn't thinking Eveleth would be much of a challenge which you know, they were, they were that, they were that day. Um, yes. So, you know, people get up for Hermantown there. They know they're the big dog and uh, they're going to play their best hockey against them. So, yeah. Re, uh, re, you know, I always think about filming hockey and, and hockey as a, as a movie subject, you know, and there's some, there's some great hockey movies out there and, and then some not so great hockey movies. Uh, you know, the, the one scene that always comes to mind back, uh, back in the Bo Jackson days when they did the, you know, Bo knows all these different sports commercials, there's actually a hockey scene with Bo Jackson coming up a rink. Well, they filmed that on concrete with him in tennis shoes, you know, and, and shot him from the waist up. But, you know, as, as someone who makes movies and, and, and makes movies about hockey, you know, not counting your own stuff, obviously, what are, what are some of your favorites? I mean, did you did you did you look at the way a, a movie like Youngblood or a movie like Slapshot was filmed, and did you, did you try and kind of learn some things from that? Definitely uh, the pacing. I, I mean, I I, I love both those films. Uh, the pacing of yeah, how much how much game footage is in those films versus how much just like human human life stuff is going on with those guys. How much him and Swayze are at the bar, you know, like what's what's the breakdown here of this film? So yeah, definitely studied some of those old hockey films, even Miracle with a. Uh, you know, that, that's a, that's a great one too. I, I, uh, yeah, I, I definitely am a student to, to hockey films there and there aren't that many really. There's, there's only, They're really not. Yeah. Less than a dozen of them. So allegedly there's a slap shot, uh, sequel and, and everybody says, just don't even bother. It just, yeah. it'll ruin risky. it. So. That's risky. <laughs> yeah. 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 You, you were so, talking about capturing, uh, capturing the emotion too, of, of what all this means to these guys and i think really you know when their season ends i think you really get that that really comes across there uh you know i mean we, we, there's a really poignant scene where you guys are talking with elliot and, and he, he kind of talks about what how this is all kind of hitting him and his mother talks about it as well and i, I would imagine that that was kind of like well the you know, this is what we're trying to get to. I mean, yeah. I would imagine that was a gratifying <laughs> a couple of moments there for, for you as a, as a film director. Rarely do you know that a, when, as soon as you film something, it's going to be in the movie right away, but that was, yeah, instantly like, yeah, that's, that's in the movie. This is the Neil Broughton moment, if you want to say it, right? Like that, so like, it's all came to that for sure. Um, yeah, it was a key moment. And Elliot, Elliot was always great. You know, I met, I, the story of meeting Elliot was, 
and I met him as a junior. We did kind of a uh, test shoot there at the Hippodrome and walked into the locker room and there's just this mop top kid, blonde hair, just yelling at players, but yelling, I'm like, construct, you know, telling them where to go on the ice and things like that. And kind of like being a, a student coach in a lot of ways. And I was like, this kid's in the movie. He's in the movie. He's great. <laughs> um, and yeah, so uh yeah, it was great. But yeah, you're right. That that moment's uh, it's. I mean, I, I edited that moment, and I've seen it 150 times, and it still hits me every time I see it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Talking with Tommy Haynes, the uh, filmmaker and director of the movie Hockey Land, a, a hockey documentary, which is coming out real soon. Okay, gala red carpet premiere. What? Uh, where can people see your movie, and and uh, and kind of what's coming up? Because I know uh, things are hitting pretty soon here. They're hitting real soon. Uh, so September 8th, we're kind of having a kickoff screening at uh san, san anthony main theater in minneapolis um and those, that's actually open for the public so they can buy tickets right now for that um i will be heading to hermantown the next day on the 9th with blake biondi and pat andrews will be doing a screening up in hermantown um my produ- co-producer andrew sherburn uh, will be i think with indio will be in uh southdale in edina on the 9th and then I'll, I'll be heading to my old home, hometown of uh, Rosemont on the 10th to go, go there. So if you got if any uh, Rosemont alum are listening and want to come say hi, yeah, pop out to that one. And then my brother's heading up to Mountain Iron, uh, Virginia uh, on the 10th as well. So we'll, we'll be hopping around the Twin Cities, but they're playing in over 60 theaters in Minnesota. So please uh, check wow. our website out and come out to it, come out to a screening. I think the bigger it, it does, the, be- the better it does in the Minnesota, the more it's going to be able to expand in other theaters across the country. I, I, I just want to point out to people too, though. I mean, <clears throat> the, it, it is a hockey film, so there there's a little bit of some rougher language. There's some chirping. There's some chirping going on. Uh, yeah. nice. Probably PG thirteen. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Good stuff. All right. So so it's real life. It's 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 uh you know not not made for TV. Not 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 scripted. It's uh. It's a real documentary film. Well, this is fantastic. Tommy Haynes, he's the Hollywood director and, and uh, a documentary filmmaker, originally from Minnesota, and uh, we've got Hockey Land coming out. I, I'm really looking forward to seeing this, and, you know, thank you for doing this project. I mean, this is, there, there are just so many fantastic untold stories, and for you to take the time and effort to, to tell one of them is fantastic. Well, thanks, guys, and if you guys want some, uh, some, some, tickets to that opening night and glad to get you guys there and uh yeah love you guys to show and yeah it'd be nice to meet you guys in person all right that sounds great tommy haynes director of uh, hockey land which is coming out here in just a, a couple days uh, just in time for the the coming hockey season good stuff all right the rink live podcast for another week that's mick hatton i'm jess myers thank you for joining us all of our content is on the rink and we will see you at the rink <laughs>